Meet Adam. He is working as the IT manager of a small clinic in his neighborhood. As the business of the clinic is going well, the management has decided to expand the clinic as a full hospital. And Adam is assigned with the task of IT infrastructure expansion but only after considering the risk factors. So Adam discussed with the software vendors to know the hardware and other IT infrastructure requirements to support the new HIS software. HIS means the hospital information system that contains modules for supporting all the departments of the new hospital. But after knowing the requirements of the new HIS software, Adam became really frustrated and confused because the specifications were very high and also needs to spend extra money for things like periodic backup, periodic maintenance and above all for security which includes physical security of the server also. Adam became really confused considering the risk factors of the business. What if the business went down after making such a huge investment for IT infrastructure? It will be a big loss of money then. It will take time for the business to grow in such a level to utilize at least 50% of the server capacity. But in all these times, we have to recursively spend money for periodic backup, maintenance and security etc. And at the end of the day, what if the business collapsed? Adam has to consider all these risk factors. Adam then decided to consult his mentor, friend and senior Jeff. Adam discussed the problem with Jeff and Jeff told him about cloud computing. Adam became surprised because he was not much aware about the term cloud computing. And so Jeff was willing to explain it for him. So Jeff started to explain about cloud computing to Adam. So it is an on-demand delivery of IT resources over internet and it's a pay-as-you-go pricing model means pay only for what you use and no need to buy any physical servers or lease data centers of your own and can access technology services like computing power, storage, databases etc on a as-needed basis and so there is no upfront fees or any contracts. Moreover, no need to over provision resources to handle peak levels in future. That is the most important thing when we use cloud computing. Jeff decided to explain the cloud computing model by comparing it with the on-premises setup so that Adam will get a more clear idea. In the on-premises setup, the scalability option is very low. But on the cloud, scalability is very high, means when the requirement is high, we can scale up the resources and when the requirement is low, we can scale down and we have to pay only for the resources we use at that instant. And regarding the physical space requirements, in the on-premise setup, it is very high and require physical security. But on the cloud, there is no space required or we don't need to worry about the physical security of the server. On the on-premises setup, we need to provide the periodic maintenance and that itself is an expenditure. But on the other hand, there is no need for any periodic maintenance done by our side. And there is low data security on on-premises when compared to the cloud environment. On cloud, we can set up a comparatively high security for our data. And disaster recovery options are very low and very expenditure, very expensive on on-premises. But on the cloud, there are a number of disaster recovery and data redundancy options with lesser cost when compared to on-premise. The on-premises environment itself is not flexible. Means, if we need to do any redesigning of our IT environment, it is very difficult in the on-premises setup. But in the cloud, it is highly flexible and we can easily redesign our IT infrastructure or environment with less effort. And regarding the software updates, we need to take care of every software updates and uh, things related with that uh, ourselves. But in the cloud environment, those things, we don't need to worry about all those things and it is taken care of the vendor itself. And regarding the continuous integration and continuous deployment option, there is no built-in options in the on-premises setup. But on the cloud environment, there is a number of tools for the easy delivery of the CI-CD things. Moreover, the implementation time required in a on-premises is very high. 
For example, for setting up the server and initial installing softwares etc may take days or even weeks. But in the cloud environment, all these can be done in a few hours and also can experiment with different setups before finalizing the best one without wasting much time. Adam became really happy and excited after knowing the details about cloud computing. And Jeff was willing to explain some more details about cloud computing to Adam. So the main features of the cloud computing model are the on-demand delivery of IT resources, there is no upfront fees and all of data are stored in the cloud and also usually a cloud vendor provides hundreds of other services also that we can use in different environments. We can see more about the on-demand delivery and pay-as-you-go pricing model. Consider that now your business is not going much well and naturally your application needs only very low resources on the server. So you can scale down for example to one CPU and one GB of RAM and you have to pay only for that one CPU and one GB of RAM at that time. No need to pay anything extra. And later, if your business grows up and then naturally your application may in need of more resources to run smoothly. For example, it may in need of two CPUs and two GB of RAM. So very easily with just click of a button, we can provision that in a cloud computing model. So this is the scalability of and flexibility a cloud offers when compared to on-premises setup. Cloud is mainly classified into two different types, one based on the deployment model and the second one based on the service model. Again in the deployment model it is again classified into three types that is first one is a public cloud, second is a hybrid cloud and third is a private cloud and service model it is again classified into IAS and then PAS and SAS. So next we can see the different types of deployment models that is the what is public cloud, hybrid cloud and the private cloud. So let's see about the public cloud. Actually public cloud is generally uh, available for all general public and it is actually deployed globally. So it can be accessed from anywhere in the world. That is the public cloud. So resources like servers, storage etc are owned and operated by a third party cloud service provider. So it is not owned by any single uh, organization or single individuals. It is deployed globally and can be accessed for uh, any general public from anywhere in the world. The hardware is shared among the tenants that is the people who are using the public cloud uh, will use the same hardware and they share the same hardware by creating different accounts. The main public cloud providers are AWS, Azure, Google etc. So the main advantages of public clouds are they have lesser cost and no maintenance and nearly unlimited scalability and high reliability. So we can compare the public cloud with the general uh, public transport system. So in a public transport system like we share the uh, resource for example, in a public transport system, we share the seats in a public transport bus, for example. So in the same way, the public cloud works. We, the tenants actually share the same amount of hardware with the others by creating individual accounts. So the public cloud is more or less similar to a public transport system. It is the easiest way to remember the public cloud. So the next one is the private cloud. So it is exclusively for one organization and so can be deployed locally. Actually private cloud is developed for one individual organization and so for the same reason it can be deployed locally in the on-premises setup or it can be hosted in a third party service provider data center also. So it is exclusive for one organization and so can be deployed locally. It can be physically located at your organization or can be hosted by a third party cloud service provider. So the main private cloud providers are VMware, IBM, Dell etc. So the advantages of the private cloud are it has more flexibility and improved security. As this uh, private cloud is deployed only for one organization, we can make any changes depends upon our needs and uh, any changes for customization that is depends that depends upon our need. So it is very flexible model when compared to the public cloud. One disadvantage of the private cloud is comparatively the cost is higher on the higher side when compared with the public cloud. And the private cloud can be compared to a private vehicle we own. So the private cloud can be compared with owning a private car. It is never shared with any other people. So the resources of a private cloud are owned by a single organization or a individual 
properly so the next one is the hybrid cloud so it is the combination of the both the public and the private clouds it is the best of both worlds we can say like that it combines on-premises setup or private clouds with the public clouds so data and applications can move between public and private clouds for greater flexibility so for example for uh, explaining the hybrid cloud we can uh, assume that in a organization uh, there is a software setup and uh, there are different kinds of module in that software for example there is a finance module and uh, another one is the HR module so the HR module and finance module must be kept as private but on the other hand some modules can be open to general public so in such cases we can use hybrid cloud for hosting these two different types of modules in a uh, software in a single organization for, for purposes like that we use hybrid cloud so it is a combination of both private cloud and the public cloud it is a combination of the best that is a, that's, that is what we have mentioned first that is it is the best of the we combine the best things of the both worlds so the main hybrid cloud providers are AWS, Microsoft, Google, IBM, Dell, etc. The main advantages are it is a cost effectiveness and it is it has a better control and it has a better flexibility. So it can be compared with a uh, compared to hiring a cab actually. Actually, for hire, when we hire a cab, it doesn't for that time. As long as we have hired that cab, it doesn't share with any other people. And we can enjoy the benefits of owning a private car also. But on the other hand, we don't need to spend a lot of money like buying a own private vehicle. So it has the advantages of both the private cloud and a public cloud. That is the hybrid cloud. So it can be compared to owning a hiring a not, not owning compared to hiring a cab. So those are the three different types of deployment models of a cloud computing. So the next classification is based on the service models. First we can consider the on-premises setup. In the on-premises setup, all these components that is the networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, runtime, data, applications, etc. All these things we need to manage ourselves. You can see here in the that is the orange colored orange colored are the things components that we have to manage and those colored in the green are the ones that the vendor will manage that is the cloud computing vendor will manage so so in the on-premises setup you can see that all these components we need to manage ourselves but uh, in the first classification of the service model that is the infrastructure as a service that is the full form of the IAS that is infrastructure as a service uh, these first four components that is networking storage servers virtualization these things the vendor will manage for us we need to only take care of rest of the things that is we need to only take care of the operating system middleware runtime data and applications so this provides the basic infrastructure and with IAS you can buy what you need as you need it and purchase more as your business grows and pay for what you use that is the model of this IAS infrastructure and the main uh, vendors that provide this IAS infrastructure are AWS, Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud are the examples of IAS. So next is the platform as a service. So again, we can compare this with a on-premises setup. In on-premises, as we have mentioned earlier, all these things we have to manage ourselves. Uh, but in a PA setup, that is a platform as a service setup, the vendor will take care of all these things, all these things that is colored in the green. That is up to, from networking up to runtime, the vendor will provide. Only data and applications we have to manage. So the PaaS provides the platforms and runtime environments to develop applications. And this is the most cost effective and time effective way for a developer to create a unique applications. So this is the best suited for a development environment so that the developer uh, need not to worry about all these things from networking to runtime the vendor will provide and the developer only need to concentrate about creating the application so the examples of the past applications are aws elastic beanstalk heroku and red hats openshift are the examples and next is the SaaS model. So in the SaaS model, all the things that is the, that is the from networking to applications, the vendor will provide. So we don't need to worry about any of the IT infrastructure. No need to worry about even hardware or even developing the software. So the most SaaS providers operate a subscription model with a fixed inclusive monthly account fee. And the SaaS platforms are ideal when you want an application to run smoothly and reliably with minimal input from you. So the best examples of the SaaS 
applications are sax modula uh, dropbox salesforce google apps etc even the gmail email we are using are is a best examples of the sas mode because we don't need we don't we are not owning any uh, servers uh, any we are not bothering bothered about any open system we are not bothered we are really not bothered about the in which open system gmail or google apps are running isn't it so this is the best example of the sas application that is the google apps and salesforce dropbox etc we are just using that application on a subscription based uh, on subscription basis so this is the best app, uh, example of a sas model and it is an absolutely worry free environment when we use the sas model we don't need to even um, worry about any hardware or software licensing or uh, or open system patches or any worries we don't need to take care of any of those things all these things will be provided by the vendor itself we just need to use the application or the software with a subscription model so we can compare all these uh, models like this so in a on premises setup we need to uh, manage all these things that is networking storage servers virtualization open system middleware runtime data application so all these things we need to manage in a on premises setup but in a ias that is in the infrastructure as a service model the vendor will provide the networking storage servers and virtualization so up to these th four things the vendor will manage and we need to manage only the os middleware runtime data and application so this is a uh, we will get more flexibility in this model because we can change any of these parameters that is from os to applications we can uh, choose what we need and there is a lot of customization flexibility options in this model but on the other hand in pass uh, the from networking to runtime the vendor will provide and we need to manage only the data and the applications so naturally the customization and the flexibility will become lesser from uh, in past when compared to ias so these are its advantages and also its disadvantages and the last one is the saas model in saas model we just need to use the application on a subscription basis so that is the saas model but just all of the things will be managed by the vendor itself so usually in a cloud computing environment when we talk about the cloud computing environment usually we will adopt the ias model that is the infrastructure as a service model when we set up in the organizations so this is the comparison of the service models and finally jeff tells adam about the major cloud providers they are the microsoft azure amazon's aws and the google cloud adam became very happy and worry free now because he now knows that his problem can be easily solved using cloud computing <laughs>